Okay. This may or may not be a Darcy's Corner. I tried to record this once, but my lighting sucks because it's the wee hours of the morning. And I don't really want to turn on a bunch of lights and wake myself up before I'm about to go to bed after finishing my shift at work. Anyway, Darcy's Corner, maybe. Huh. Masters of the Universe, my take on it. And Kevin Smith, pay attention. I know, I'm nothing. I got 12 followers. So you'll probably never see this. I'm going to put it out there anyway, probably, though. So, back in the 80s, when I was 5 and 6 years old, I mean, He-Man was the thing, right? Um, for me, and at that point in time, they'd all been shot or made. Every movie, every He-Man show that was going to be made had already come out. But, I mean, when you're five and six, you don't care. And there's like 120 or something of them. So, it takes a long time for a five-year-old to watch 120 episodes of anything. <laughs> I probably still haven't seen them all. But I've seen many of them. And, like, the He-Man lore, when you were, like, that was everything, right? So, I knew who Orca was, and I knew... Uh, who Tila was, and I knew all those different things. That was important to a six-year-old, a five-year-old. Of course it was. <laughs> we could follow plot lines, believe it or not. <laughs> we, we weren't stupid. <clears throat> and your take on Orko, my friend, you did not understand that show. I don't have a problem with Mark Hamill as uh, Skeletor, but then I never watched the Batman, so I don't hear Joker when I'm watching the show with Mark Hamill. I'm just hearing a different version of Skeletor. It's true he's not making jokes and being funny like he was in the original, but, you know, this is a different show. So, And I don't have a problem with Tila being elevated to the next level of hero because she is the daughter of the sorceress and she was a kick-ass companion to he-man so to have the camera shift over to her in her growth story that's fine but the fact that you left out he-man and you sidelined cringer after making him a relevant character like oh look cringer is giving words of wisdom and he's smart and he knows what's going on. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's great. So, there's nothing wrong with um, having Cringer take a different role. And there's nothing wrong with having Tila be elevated to the kick ass mercenary or whatever that she became. I mean, that's all great. It is weird that she's so angry. That she leaves everything after He-Man sacrifices himself to save them all. Like, why would she do that? Why wouldn't she honor his sacrifice? <laughs> like, you can understand maybe the king being mad. There were several episodes, or at least one in particular, in the, throughout the original 80s series, where the, the king and then Adam kind of get in some arguments and the king doesn't think Adam's measuring up because the king doesn't know Adam's He-Man. Um, so, I mean, that's whatever. You could play that dynamic out, sure. But he wouldn't have gotten rid of his top general <laughs> because of that. That's stupid. <laughs> right? There was still evil, evil forces on Eternity that needed to be fought and whatever. But anyway, those are plot holes that maybe we could overlook or get past. But your take on Orko. Orko was the misfit. And Orko was the comic relief. But the other thing Orko was, and this plays out in the 80's cartoon, he was the most powerful of his people. He was his uncle's prodigy or whatever. The problem with Orko was not that he was not powerful. It was that he didn't know how to use it. He couldn't focus it right. 
And you kind of allude to that in your version of it, where him and Evil Lynn team up, and then, like, suddenly he can do stuff. Why could he do stuff? He had somebody competent showing him how to use his power. That's what he needed. Like, if you would have made him and Evil Lynn a team up, Evil Lynn never really needed Skeletor. She always rivaled him. There were several episodes where she, like, could do things all on her own without him and be just fine. I love the explanation of she wasn't really evil at heart. She just played the hand she was dealt. That's the crowd she got stuck with, so that's what she was doing. When she turns tail at the last second to go back to Skeletor, well, she just picked the winning team. <laughs> right? It wasn't that she was evil, per se, but she couldn't beat him then. So she's like, I don't have to beat him. I just have to stand next to him. <laughs> so, like, that made sense to me. But the other part that would have made sense would have been to keep Orko alive. But I'm hoping, because Orko died off screen, that Orko isn't dead. I mean, if there's one thing that you learn from, uh, from TV cartoon characters' deaths, if they die off screen, they're not really dead. And as we've already shown, or you already shown once with, with Adam, well, he died the first time and he wasn't really dead. So now he's dead again. Well, if you bring him back, he's not really dead. We're doing good. If you don't bring him back, you killed He-Man on the He-Man show. <laughs> I realize you changed the name from the He-Man show, but that is the He-Man show. That's why we watched it as children. We didn't watch the Teela show. We didn't watch Man Arm show. And even though I'm an advocate of Orko and I love the little guy, we didn't watch the Orko show. We watched the He-Man show. So that's what we watched. So, anyway, I'm hoping this gets fixed in Season 2. And I'm really hoping that you guys didn't screw this up. Because... The graphics are awesome, and so much of the storyline is really quite good, actually. And it wouldn't take that many tweaks to make it what it should be. <laughs> Again, nothing against Mark Hamill, nothing against any of the cast, actually. Uh, the fact that you got Buffy to play Tila, <laughs> like, I wasn't that big a Michelle Gellar fan before, but I am now. I think she does an awesome Tila. I think that Tila has, apparently, a lesbian girlfriend. Amazing. Right? I'm glad you brought those things to light. And I hope that it's not queer baiting. I hope that you show, look, these two are a couple. Like, you should show that. That should be in there. We shouldn't be alluding to that. Not in today's day and age. No, no, no. We need to see ourselves on the screens. Because we were always there, the queer community. We were just always in the background as background characters. And we would hide it. Well, why are we hiding it? We don't have to hide anymore. Don't hide us. Just show us as part of every community like we've always been anyway that's a bit of my rant and take on the masters of the universe this is darcy's corner uh i kind of apologize for the shitty lighting because i'm just doing it with the light from my tv but i like this view better than full bright stuff especially this time of of the morning because for me right now it's 5 a.m <laughs> i just finish my my night run but I wanted to share this because uh, it was an important part of my childhood for me as it was for many I'm sure you've gotten much hate <laughs> and uh, I really am hoping that you manage to pull it around or pull it up and make a difference uh, that would be marvelous because I don't know. 
I guess in today's day and age, with COVID and hate rallies and we got Nazis marching up here in Canada and you got insurrections down in the States, there are more important things in life than uh, whether well, or not my favorite storybook characters come to life the right way. But man, <laughs> fix this. Okay, Darcy's Corner, out.